understand your Bible. I'm glad you've joined us for our Bible study today, and I hope that you'll take your Bible and follow along in the Scriptures. As always, our intention in these Bible studies is to give you information that will help you to better understand your Bible. As I mentioned quite frequently, many people have the idea that the Bible is some deep, dark, and mysterious book and very hard to be understood. But there are certain keys to unlock the Scriptures. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 is one of those, and the Apostle Paul says there, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what we want to do on this broadcast, is to show you how to understand your Bible. And the key to that is rightly dividing the word of truth. At Grace Bible Church, who brings you these broadcasts, we teach the Bible rightly divided. That means we distinguish between the doctrine given to the church, the body of Christ, from the doctrine given to and for the nation Israel. I have a chart here that we use on all of our broadcasts, and it simply shows you some divisions in the Bible. It shows you that the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, cover a period of time when Jesus Christ was on the earth teaching the twelve disciples and for three years went about instructing them, and during that time preached the Gospel of the Kingdom, Uh, He taught it to the twelve. He said he was sent to Israel and so forth. After his death on the cross, the twelve continued that ministry in the early part of Acts. But in Acts 9, the apostle Paul was saved. And then he writes 13 epistles, the next epistles in your Bible, Romans through Philemon. Then at the end of that, we have the Hebrew epistles, which begins with Hebrews and uh, goes through Revelation. And the doctrine of those books will match the doctrine of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, that's what we mean when we talk about rightly dividing the word of truth. That is to simply distinguish between church doctrine, doctrine in the dispensation of the grace of God, and the kingdom doctrine of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. For several weeks, we talked about the revelations of the Apostle Paul that are written down in the Scriptures. Last week, we began a new study, and I mentioned to you that the reason I wanted to do that was because many times people get the idea that somehow we put too much emphasis on the Apostle Paul. Well, what I hope you'll see in the study today is that we, do, we put no more emphasis on the Apostle Paul than the Lord Jesus Christ and God Himself did. We, we are entitling this series of studies, The Teachings of Christ. And last week, we looked at the past teachings of Christ. That would have to do with the period of time that we looked at on the board there that are covered by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. During that study, we saw that Jesus Christ, according to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, was born under the law. He said He came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. In Matthew 23, He specifically teaches the twelve that they are to keep the law. Uh, In Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the first recorded messages of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve, the instruction He gave there, it's called the Sermon on the Mount, Many things that we looked at there in those scriptures Jesus Christ taught that the church, the body of Christ today, does not observe. Many of them they cannot observe. And yet many people will say, well, we believe in following the doctrine of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We believe that the words of Jesus are more inspired than the words of Paul. Well, as I pointed out last week, all the words of the Bible are the Word of God. The words given to the Apostle Paul and through the Apostle Paul are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, in verse 1, Paul writing to Timothy says there, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and His doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit, These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing. Now this is very interesting because when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will not find the things that Paul just wrote about in 1 Timothy chapter 6. That is, that servants are to be obedient to their masters. And yet Paul says those words are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we know that the Apostle Paul did not follow Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry. 
And so where did Paul get these words of the Lord Jesus Christ when Paul was not even saved until several years after the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified? He said in Acts chapter 9 that he uh, was on the road to Damascus and a bright light appeared and he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. And we have there in Acts chapter 9 Paul's conversion experience. And then after Paul is saved, after the book of Acts, the next 13 books in your Bible are the writings of the Apostle Paul. So what I want us to do today is look at the fact that in this new, uh, the teachings of Christ, the past teachings of Christ, we find in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we did a very uh, quick study of those things last week and tried to show how that most of those teachings people do not observe today, even though they say they believe that to be the doctrine for the church. But with the Apostle Paul, we have the present teachings of Christ. As a matter of fact, I want you to go back and look in your Bible, if you will, to Acts chapter 1. And if you don't have your Bible handy, maybe you can just jot these passages down and look at them later on. Some people teach that the Apostle Paul simply took Judas's place and became one of the twelve. Well, we know that's not true because when Jesus Christ... Uh, told the twelve there in Acts chapter 1. He said, uh, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And that's what they did. And during that period of time in Acts chapter 1, uh, in verse 20, the Bible says, For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein and his bishopric let another take. Whereof, wherefore, of these men, which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto the same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. In other words, it is clear that the one that replaced Judas had been with the disciples and with the Lord Jesus Christ all during his earthly ministry. That's what it says. It says, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. The Apostle Paul would not meet that qualification. And so what we find out is that in Matthew chapter 19, when Jesus Christ told Peter, that the twelve were going to sit upon twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Obviously, Jesus Christ in his deity knew that Judas was going to betray him, but there was already somebody there that was going to take his place who had heard all the teachings of Jesus Christ. It says the whole time that Jesus went in and out among them, this person was there. And so there are, there's more than one. And they appointed two, Joseph called Bersabus, and who was surnamed Justice and Matthias, and they pray, and they cast lots, and there's one chosen. Uh, verse 26, they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So the apostle Paul was not one of the twelve. Paul was saved in Acts chapter 9 after Israel was given an opportunity to repent of their sin of crucifying the Messiah. When Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, he preached a murder indictment against the nation Israel. So in Acts chapter 9, we find the Apostle Paul is saved. In Acts chapter 26, the Apostle Paul is before King Agrippa. And I want to read from Acts chapter 26 and uh, show you what the Scripture says about Paul's ministry. In Acts chapter 26, uh, in verse 13, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. Now notice in verse 18 the ministry of the Apostle Paul. 
to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. Who is them? That is the Gentiles of verse 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now last week we saw in Matthew chapter 10 that when Jesus Christ sent out the twelve, he said, Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In Matthew chapter 15, he told a woman there, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So we see that Jesus Christ and the twelve had a very specific ministry among the nation Israel. But when Paul is saved, God shows him that his ministry is going to be among the Gentiles. Uh, in Romans chapter 11, the Apostle Paul, in making reference there to his ministry, says in verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. You see, the past teachings of Christ were conveyed to the twelve, Peter, James, John, and the other disciples, and they were commissioned to carry out that ministry of preaching the gospel of the kingdom. But there came a time when God delayed the prophetic program. In Acts 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, the next event on God's prophetic calendar was the 70th week of Daniel. It's called the tribulation. It's called the day of Jacob's trouble. It's a seven-year period when God will pour out His wrath upon the earth and particularly upon the nation Israel. And God postponed that wrath. Instead of bringing His wrath, He saved Paul in Acts chapter 9. And Paul said that he was given the dispensation of the gospel. He was given the dispensation of the grace of God. And so Paul's ministry was to preach a new gospel to a new group of people. And that peop those people were the Gentiles. So he says, I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. You see, Paul did not want people following him in his flesh, but he did want them to acknowledge his position as the apostle to the Gentiles. In Romans chapter 15... Last week, we looked at verse 8 in Romans chapter 15 and talking about Jesus Christ and His ministry, the past teachings of Christ. In Romans 15, 8, he says, I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. But notice in verse 16, concerning Himself, He says, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. You see, when Paul was saved, God revealed unto him that he was going to have a separate and distinct ministry from that which had taken place before. And so Paul writes about that throughout his epistles. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm sorry, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, in verse 3, uh, the Apostle Paul says, uh, in verse 1, he says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Uh, be ye followers of me. Now this is interesting because he had told the Corinthians earlier not to follow after men. So Paul is not telling them to follow him in his flesh. He says, be ye followers of me even as I am of Christ. And it has to do with following the doctrine given unto him. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 16. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. And then we read in 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Be ye followers of me. So the apostle Paul is the new apostle. And to this new apostle is given the revelation of the mystery. In Romans chapter 16, uh, Romans 16, the first book in the order of Paul's epistles, not the first one that he wrote, that was Thessalonians, but Romans is the first in the order of Paul's epistles that begins the 13 epistles written by the Apostle Paul in which we find the doctrine, the walk, the position, and salvation for the church, the body of Christ. And as he concludes that book, he says in verse 25 of Romans 16, Now to him that is of power to establish you, Notice, number one, according to my gospel. Number two, and the preaching of Jesus Christ 
according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. You see, the Apostle Paul reveals there that what he's preaching is different from that which has been preached previously. Because everything that the Lord Jesus Christ taught the twelve in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and everything they preached in Acts chapter 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 was according to prophecy. When Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached, he said, this is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. But Paul said that the ministry that he had was to testify the gospel of the grace of God. He says that over in Acts chapter 20. Uh, in Acts chapter 20, he's talking about going up to Jerusalem. And uh, he's been warned not to go. And in Acts 20, he says in verse 24, None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now it's interesting, when Jesus Christ sent forth the twelve, He sent them forth to preach the gospel of the kingdom. And He sent them forth with the power to heal and to uh, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, Paul said that his ministry was to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Somebody once said that things that are different are not the same. You say, well, that's obvious. Well, it is also obvious in the Scriptures. When the twelve are sent forth to preach the gospel of the kingdom, we can read in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and find out what that gospel is. It has to do with believing that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. But when Paul testifies the gospel of the grace of God, that gospel goes beyond the fact that Jesus Christ is just the Messiah. That gospel has to do with the fact that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And our is very important because what did he say? He said, Paul, you're going to be the apostle to the Gentiles. You're going to bear my name to the Gentiles. And Paul said the ministry that he received was to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So over there in Romans chapter 16, what does he say that we're to be doing? He says, he is a, God is of power to establish you, number one, according to my gospel. That's interesting that Paul calls the gospel he preached my gospel. That is not an egotistical viewpoint of the Apostle Paul. It is an acknowledgement of some facts. And that fact is that God gave the gospel of the grace of God to the Apostle Paul. He did not convey that gospel to Peter, James, and John. And so when Paul comes forth preaching, he is preaching a new message. It, it is the message of Jesus Christ. In Galatians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul makes that very clear that he's not preaching that which was given to him by some man. He didn't go to the twelve to find out what he ought to preach. He got his revelation directly from the Lord. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 11, he says, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Back in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul tells us what that gospel is. I mentioned that a moment ago. But let me read it to you because he says something after that that is very significant. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3, he says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, and then of all the apostles. Paul is speaking there of all the appearances that Jesus Christ made to those on earth. But notice what he says in verse 8. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. That when he says, last of all, he was seen of me, he is speaking of the occurrence in Acts chapter 9 when the Lord appears unto him in that bright light. And when the Lord appears unto the apostle Paul, he appears unto him for that purpose that we read about in Acts chapter 26.
That is, Paul, we've got, I've got a new ministry for you. That ministry is for you to testify of the gospel of the grace of God before the Gentile people. And Paul makes it very clear over in Ephesians that this ministry included the gospel of the grace of God. He calls it the dispensation of the grace of God. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 1, he said, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word. Listen, folks, as I mentioned so often, it's important that we believe the Bible means what it says, where it says it, to whom it says it. All Scripture is given inspiration of God. It's all inspired. And the writings of Paul are the writings of the Lord Jesus Christ given through the Apostle Paul. And that Apostle said that the dispensation of the grace of God was given me to you. Word. Then we know that the dispensation of the grace of God could not been, have been in effect prior to the salvation of Paul. If it was given to Paul, then obviously it couldn't have been taught before Paul, and it wasn't. The gospel that was being preached was the gospel of the kingdom. Repent and be baptized for remission of sins, believing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Paul's gospel that he calls my gospel in, first, in Romans chapter 16 is the gospel of the grace of God, and that gospel is the facts we read there in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 and 4. That gospel is that that one who is the Messiah, that was the Son of God, uh, God manifest in the flesh, that man, Christ Jesus, died on a cross, and when he died, all of your sins were placed upon him, he became your sin, and God forgave us all trespasses on the basis of what the man, Christ Jesus, did in our behalf. So the Apostle Paul is the Apostle to the Gentiles. The Apostle Paul is given the dispensation of the grace of God. The Apostle Paul is a new apostle. He is not one that is one of the twelve, and he makes that clear. He said, Now to him there is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. You see, Peter, James, and John were preaching Jesus Christ. That They were preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of that they received from him in his physical being on earth. Paul received his revelation from Jesus Christ from heaven. And that revelation was a revelation of the mystery. That mystery has to do with not something that's real mysterious and dark and hidden. It has to do with some truth that was hidden and it was revealed to and through the Apostle Paul. And that truth was that Jesus Christ, when he died on that cross... He died for all men. Notice, if you will, in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse 11. As Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, he writes there in verse 11 and says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision of flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant's promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Notice that this gospel given to Paul opens the door of salvation to people who were not allied with Israel. They were aliens. They were not in the covenants of promise. They had no hope and they were without God in the world. But notice what he says in verse 13. He said, but now. You see, you can divide your Bible into three time periods. Time past, but now, and that which is to come. The but now time period in your Bible is the dispensation of the grace of God. It began with the Apostle Paul and it continues till today. And there's coming a time when that dispensation is going to come to a close. The Bible calls it the fullness of the Gentiles. When that gospel, when that dispensation comes to a close, God will remove the church. He'll catch the church away from the earth according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4. And that catching away will open the door for God to once again begin His dealings with the nation Israel and take up that time period that He postponed in the book of Acts when uh, He started the dispensation of grace with the Apostle Paul. So He says there, if you have heard of the... Uh, I'm sorry, back in chapter 2, 
He says that in verse 13, But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You see, folks, rather than people resisting this wonderful truth of Paul's apostleship and Paul's authority as the apostle to the Gentiles, we should rejoice in that and glory in that, for it is through this man, the apostle Paul. And we do not put stock in the man. Paul said he was the chief of sinners. He said that in his flesh dwelt no good thing. But what we glory in is the cross that Paul preached and the gospel that Paul preached and that is the gospel whereby people are saved today. If you've never been saved, it's because you've never believed the gospel that Paul preached. The gospel Paul preached is Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried, He was raised again the third day according to the Scriptures and that gospel is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. If you'll believe that gospel... Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive Him right now. He'll save you for Christ's sake. There are no works involved. It's all by grace. It was given through Paul. And now it is your choice to either accept it or reject it. Grace Bible Church extends to you and your family a cordial invitation to join us for our Sunday services. Bible classes begin at 10 a.m. with morning service at 11 and informal evening Bible study at 6 p.m. For more information, phone Thank you for joining us for this edition of Understanding Your Bible. For more information, write to the address on your screen or call 423-847-0768. Be sure to be with us again next week for another edition of Understanding Your Bible.